Hi, welcome to Shoreshade University. Uh, today's video is going to be on a roller rebuild along with canvas replacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive into this and show you guys how to remove the canvas from the roller first, then strip the roller down to show you the individual parts. And then what we'll do is we'll put it all back together, put the canvas on, tension it, ready to be uh, reinstalled back on the boat. So I've got uh, Carol Bender here to help me with everything. Some of the parts will take two people to do, but this can mostly be done with one person. So what we'll do at first, we'll dive in. Carol, if you wanna grab that end. You have your two people. One of the things that you wanna make sure you do not do is you don't want to turn the roller to take the canvas off. That is a no-no. You'll actually turn the springs the incorrect way and you'll blow the springs out of it. What you wanna do is grab the roller from turning and throw the canvas over, holding the roller from turning itself. So as you can see, this roller is stationary, it's not moving. And we'll keep doing this until we have all the canvas off. Let's get it over the table so we don't get it dirty. And if the roller turns a slight bit, it's not gonna end the world, you just don't wanna turn it this many times to get the canvas off. Okay, so now you have the roller tube exposed. So now what you wanna do is just make sure you don't set your clamps on top of the canvas and punch a hole in it. So once you have this down, uh, one of the things I wanna tell you is I recommend highly you guys do this in one sitting, that we don't break it down into, okay, I took it apart today, I put it back together tomorrow. Pro problem is, <clears throat> if you come back tomorrow and somebody takes this roller, and moves the orientation of the roller and spins it, you have a high probability of putting the roller back together backwards. So what I recommend is, when you get it to this point before you disassemble anything, you take a Sharpie marker and you draw arrows on the components showing the way the canvas wraps around the roller. Okay, so this way, if you were to move any of the components you have arrows showing the direction of rotation. If you put this together backwards and try and pre-tension it or roll the canvas the wrong way, you're gonna blow the springs out of it. So it's, it's key, you'll hear me say that several times. Make sure everything goes back together the right way. So the next step in just replacing the canvas, what we would do is we'd grab our Allen wrench. And you'd remove your first set screw and your spring clip. That's it, set that aside. Okay, so the next step, if you were just replacing the canvas and not rebuilding the roller, you can take your new piece of canvas, lay it on top of this old piece of canvas again so it doesn't get dirty, take these, pull it out, okay, and lay your canvas on top of here. Then what you can do is where your holes are already punched, you got four holes, take your new piece of canvas, lay it on top of this piece, and then just take your trusty hand punch and just punch your holes through both pieces of canvas at the same time. That's one way of doing it. Or the other way of doing it is if we possibly didn't get it perfectly on here, you can make sure your distance right here to here is equal on both sides. Mark your hole and then punch your new hole. If that's what you need to do either way, whichever you're most comfortable with. I find just punching it through the old canvas is the easiest way. So now what we'll do is, I'm gonna grab that curl, we'll pick the roller up, slide the canvas back. Again, we're not changing orientation. Again, we're keeping the canvas the way it came off the roller. We're keeping the roller the way it came off, okay? So the next step in going forward, if you have an issue where you have blown out springs or a damaged roller and you're having to rebuild it, the next step would be to take your Allen wrench Thank you. And we're going to remove the next screw that holds the spring clip on. And again, you want to put these 
aside the way you took them off. So this is gonna come here and then what you can do is stay there. I'll, I always take my marker and put an X over that hole because there's nothing telling you that you can't put it like this and now that's backwards, okay? So this end is slotted and this end is just a hole. So on the, the end that's a hole, I put an X. So we just remember that and I do that across each one of them. Down wrench. And I've done this several times and I still put X's on the holes and I still take pictures of them because like anybody else, I'm just as capable of walking away from a project and forgetting which end was which and putting it back together backwards. So it's just best to mark things or take pictures. Digital pictures are cheap. You can delete them when you're done with them. Okay, so now that we've got each one of those pieces removed, the next step is just take one end. We have, as you can see, you can't get this tube off because we have a clamp on this end and we have a clamp on this end. So just pick a side, whatever you wanna work, left to right or right to left. I always choose left to right. Don't ask me why, it's just what I do. Grab your Allen wrench and there is a small set screw I wanna show you. Just this set screw. You're gonna take it out. We've already removed this. When this goes back in, you just wanna make sure it's flush, but I've already partially removed it to make the process a little faster. Set that clamp aside, and again, remember, it only goes in one way. There's only one hole in it. Set that aside. Take your screw out so you don't lose it. Okay, next step, Carol, if you want to, just hold that end, and we're gonna pull the tube off. Okay, so now that we've got the tube off, we've got all the roller components uh, exposed. I just wanna briefly go over each individual component with you. So with the roller, it is imperative. Again, we always mark everything to show front, back, which way everything gets torsion when you tension the spring. Again, when it's hanging on the boat, your clamp is here, your finger points aft and it's on top. So if you ever see this clamp, in this position, you know it's not hung correctly, okay? If you see it like this, opposite, this would be now the starboard side. If your finger is up and forward, it's wrong, okay? The correct way is always up top, pointing aft. That's the correct way this clamp and this roller gets attached to the, the stationary tubes, okay? So that being said, we'll dive into each piece. These do have a left spring and a right spring. And I wanna make very clear how you differentiate between the two of them. If you order a roller rebuild kit, they should come like this, and you will have one marked L for left and R for right. And what I wanna show you the difference is when you look, if you take your left hand on the left side and wrap your hand around it, your finger wraps around the roller the same way your spring wraps around the collar, okay? So it follows my spring around. Come over to the other side. If I use my left, my, my right hand, sorry, again, your finger follows the collar, okay? So that, that's how you tell your left from your right. So we have the right springs on here. If we had to replace this, say we were replacing the right spring, what I would generally do is hold the bar here. You're gonna take your Allen wrench and there is a small set square. I'm gonna show you in this end. This small Allen head, this is meant to slide back and forth in here. So you're just gonna take that screw out. So that's all I'm gonna do is take the screw out on this side. Slide the spring out, okay? Take your new spring. 
make sure you clean the tube because a lot of times what happens is you'll have some corrosion on the tube. Just take some Neverdoll, clean the tube off with Neverdoll, make sure that your component in here is nice and cleaned out. On the new one, it should be. You might find corrosion inside. A lot of times that's what gets it to stick. When you have salt buildup in here, you can clean it out. But if you've gone and purchased the kit, just use all the new components. Okay, just line up your hole, put your screw back in. Okay, nothing needs to be super tight. Just put it on, snug it up. Make sure that you have play left and right in the, in the spring, okay? These generally don't need to be replaced. There's, there's nothing really to go wrong with them. It's just a collar with a bushing in it that rides on the tube, so there's no bearings in it to go bad. Just make sure that they spin freely. Make sure you got appropriate spacing. Make sure that you've got some play left and right on this side as well. And then what I generally do is set it down <clears throat> and then we start reassembly. What I want to show you is if you ever pull your tube off, your, your uh, roller tube, and you find a spring that looks like this. This is from one of two things and one of two things only. This would be... normally attached like this, it would come off your roller. This occurs from tensioning the roller the wrong direction. So in other words, instead of turning your roller counterclockwise when viewed from the starboard side of the roller assembly, you'd be rolling it counterclockwise, which is the same way as our arrows all show. If you roll it the wrong way, you can do this to the spring. This kind of damage generally occurs that when you have a shade that's fully extended, and pre-tensioned and the customer just unzips the canvas and lets it fly. This is what happens to the springs. And then what you'll notice is when you go to put everything back together and tension it, it won't ever tension. So that's the only thing this causes. Uh, you'd have to replace the springs. That's the only fix for it. Okay, so let's get ahead. We'll dive back in. We'll put everything back together. So what I usually do is I will take my tube I'll grab that and try and get everything lined up before you put it back together. Take this and slide it all the way to the end. And what I want to do is make sure that my collar and my hole are pretty much lined up right there. If you want to hold that like that, Carol. Okay. Then you can come down here and you can see our holes are way off. That's probably because I've got this one pulled way out left. So let's make sure we got plenty of room. Yeah. So we've got play. We'll get this lined up. Here and here is good. So if you come over here, Diana, I'll show you this part here. So this hole here looks like it'll cooperate. This we have play in left and right, so we can line that hole up. But if you line this hole up with this collar, we'd be generally in the ballpark. If you come over here, we're gonna have a heck of a time getting this hole to line up with that one because it's too far to the left. We don't have enough play in this. So what I would do is, you can loosen that collar if it's too tight, but as you can see, ours is movable. They just need to be snug. Okay, we'll line these back up again. Right there. Still needs to come over a little more, I'll loosen it up. So these have little pinch screws on them. Again, all you need is about 3 sixteenths on either side of play. Let's try that one more time. Get this one lined up. And now that one should be close enough. We ought to be able to get it in the hole. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dryer tube again. <clears throat> we're not changing the orientation of the bar. We still have the bar laying in the same direction we started. We're going to take the tube we haven't changed left and right. OK, 
okay? So when you get to the end, like I just did, there you go. What you wanna do is you don't wanna start turning these components. Okay, you just wanna make sure that your spring is unwound, you're not tensioning anything. And again, we wanna get our holes lined up, which is right here. Now, the next important thing is, remember we put an X on the hole that gets this screw in it. So that's the component we really need. So what we're gonna do is, it's okay to turn the tube 180 degrees. So there's our X, here's our hole, and again, our arrows. So our arrow is facing the same direction as our arrow, and we have X marks the spot, so we can take Usually on the outside ones, these are the easiest. You just kind of line them up. Okay, got it that time. And just go until you see it's snug up on here. You don't have to crush the tube. It's not holding anything under strength, okay? So then what you would do is just work your way across. So right now, if you come over here, you might better see this, it'll be a little hard. If you look in this hole here, you don't see your collar. So when you feel it, it's over here. Here's where our collar is. When you squeeze the tube, see I can't squeeze this part. So I know my collar's here and my hole's over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the end and we're gonna slide. Okay, so now if you look in the hole, you can see our collar. Now what you can do is use a pick and now we just need to find the hole that it's in which can be a little challenging. There we go. So there's our hole. Again, try not to lose it and move anything. Again, doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. Okay, come up to the next one. We got lucky on this one. I think our hole is pretty close to where we are. And you just gotta kinda dig around and find a hole. Okay, and the last one is usually one of the easiest ones. You just wanna get your collar to where you can see where your end is, which there's our hole. Be careful not to cross thread it. You'll know if you're cross threading it. Just stop and take the screw out, start it over. Okay, so now we have all of our springs put back in. Let's rotate this back where we started again. So now we're back to our normal positioning. Clamp is face side down on the table. 
all of our arrows are going the right direction. Roller, okay? So the next step is gonna be to reattach the canvas. So again, doing this all in one sitting, we know our canvas wasn't moved, we know which way our roller was. So we're gonna pick this up, just take our canvas, pull it from out from under. So again, the canvas is going to wrap the same way that our arrows go. And they go underneath the spring clips. Okay? So if we are installing the same piece of canvas, then they're gonna go in the same holes, of course. If not, just start at one end, See if you can line your holes, should line up pretty close because your other side is already installed. What I usually do is I'll try and get, oh, there's several ways you can do it. But if you can see, the hole's kind of hard to see in there. So the best thing to do is try and line. Thank you. Okay, so now I've got my Allen wrench in there. I'll take my collar. I'm still lined up, okay? Then what I do is try and pinch these. Okay, there we go, we got it. And I won't tighten that, okay? I'll leave that loose. Okay, so what we did is we got the last two of our clamps installed so we have the canvas completely installed on the roller the next thing I want to do is I'm going to reinstall our half clamp on the end of the roller and again there's only one way that's going to go on Cal you pick up that end for me turn it turn your end there you go right there so you're just going to line your hole your two holes up Tighten it down, that's it, you're done. That's the other end of the roller. So now what we need to do is now we need to actually put the canvas back on the roller. And again, the key thing is, if you want to, um, if you want to have an assistant to do it, you can, Carol help me pick it up. And what we wanna do is instead of turning the roller to wrap the canvas, which is a no-no, I'll hold the roller and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the canvas and we're going to throw it over the roller and just keep it as tight as you can. We're going to keep doing this. Go ahead and straighten your edges out. turn your roller the way it faces again. So this is the way it actually hangs on the boat. So when you get it reinstalled back on your stationary tubes to pre-tension the roller, what you're gonna do is go ahead and hold that canvas. This is the way it would be. You're going to actually turn the roller this way to pre-tension your roller. And the rule of thumb is one roll of pre-tension for every foot of extension, okay? So if you have a five foot, you do five turns, six foot, six turns, seven, seven turns. That's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that helps you with what you need. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Pre